In this video, I'm going to give an introduction to Penrose diagrams, named after the British Nobel Prize winning mathematical physicist Sir Roger Penrose. These are a way of representing an infinite space and time in a meaningful way and are very useful in understanding how different events in space time are related, what happens around black holes and the evolution of the universe. But first, a little background about space time. All of you will be familiar with the concept of space coordinates X, Y, Z to locate a point in space, although polar coordinates can be used instead, where you have a distance from the origin and two angles. But to define when an event occurs, we also need to know the time coordinates. The set of four coordinates are called the space time coordinates. A frame of reference is a platform in which our t, x, y and z coordinates are measured. If we wanted to measure where an event in London was, we might say t equals UTC and x, y, z might be measured with respect to the centre of St Paul's Cathedral. If we had New York, we might have t equals Eastern Standard Time, x, y, z is measured with respect to the Empire State Building lobby. And if it was on a passenger jet, T might be the time since takeoff and X, Y, Z measured with respect to a particular location on the passenger jet, for example, the cockpit. As viewers of my previous video on special relativity will know, there is no absolute frame of reference. If we want to draw the path object through space time, we can't really draw three dimensions of space and one dimension of time on a flat piece of paper. So in order to simplify things, we don't show or suppress one or two of the space dimensions. A commonly used space time diagram is a Minkowski diagram. In this diagram, we suppress two of the space dimensions. So we only show one space dimension, which is conventionally shown on the horizontal axis. The time dimension is, of course, on the vertical axis. So events in space time are just points in this diagram. For example, event A occurs at the top of the Empire State Building at 12 o'clock UTC on the 1st of May 2022. Event B occurs at the bottom of the Tycho Crater on the Moon at 12.15 UTC on the same day. Note the actual choice of the origin is completely arbitrary and this diagram we've chosen the x-axis origin to be the top of the Empire State Building and again the origin of the time axis is completely arbitrary we've just chosen it, it to be 12 o'clock UTC on the 1st of May. One feature of space-time diagrams is that the time and distance axes are in units so the speed of light is always one. So if the time units are in years the distance units must be in light years. So light ray such as that in the diagram will always move at an angle of 45 degrees. If we measured time differently for example in seconds then we'd have to measure our distances in light seconds. A light second is the distance light travels in a second roughly 300,000 kilometers. These diagrams illustrate three different types of separation. Time-like, the slope of the line joining two events is greater than 45 degrees. It's possible for a material particle, which must travel slower than the speed of light to get between the two events. Light-like, the slope of the line is exactly 45 degrees. It's possible for light to get from between the two events, but no material particle can do. It's not possible to travel between A and D in this diagram. It's a space-like separation. The slope of the line is less than 45 degrees. An example of one would be because it takes four years for light to travel from Alpha Centauri, an event occurring on Alpha Centauri in five minutes time, Earth time, has a space-like separation from us. If we consider an event at a location, call it A, in space-time, all locations in the future light cone 
have a time-like separation and can be affected by event A. Locations in the past light cone also have a time-like separation and could have affected or communicated with event A. Regions outside the light cone have a space-like separation and cannot affect or be affected by event A. Incidentally, they're called light cones because if we show two space dimensions rather than one, they'd have a cone shape. The following diagram shows the path through space-time or the world line of three different particles. The red line is a ray of light which of course moves at 45 degrees. The dark green line is a particle which remains, remains forever fixed in a given location, so it has a vertical world line. The purple line is a particle moving at half the speed of light in the x-direction. Assuming that the universe is flat and space and time go on to infinity, then these lines will go on forever. But of course we can't show this properly on the diagram. As I'll show next, Penrose diagrams rescale space-time diagrams, so you can show an infinite range of values in a finite space. At the same time, they preserve the fact that light travels at 45 degrees. So space-time is of an infinite universe in which space isn't curved, and in Minkowski universe, we can make use of the inverse tangent function. This maps an infinite range of values onto a finite range. Inverse tangent of minus infinity is minus pi divided by 2. Inverse tangent of plus infinity is plus pi divided by 2. The Minkowski universe is infinitely old and will last an infinite time, infinite extent, and contains a negligible amount of matter. It's flat. So although it's simpler model than our universe, which, as most people know, starts with a big bang, it still illustrates the concepts of building a Penrose diagram very well. To get the Penrose diagram for the Minkowski universe, we apply the following coordinate transformations. Conformal distance, which we'll call capital X, is given by inverse tangent X plus T plus inverse tangent X minus T. Conformal time, which will give the symbol big T, is equal to inverse tangent x plus t minus inverse tangent x minus t. This scrunches up the range of coordinates so that x and t run between plus and minus pi. We have 0 infinity maps to 0 pi, infinity 0 maps to pi 0, 0 minus infinity maps to 0 minus pi, and minus infinity 0 maps to minus pi 0. We now show how the three world lines we met earlier look like in the new coordinates. Once again, the dark green line is a particle which remains forever fixed in the same location. In the Penrose diagram, it has a curved world line, which finishes at a t-coordinate of plus pi and starts at a t-coordinate of minus pi. The purple line is a particle moving at half the speed of light in the x-direction. In the Penrose diagram, it has this s-shaped world line, which starts at a t-coordinate of minus pi and finishes at a t-coordinate of plus pi. In fact, if we map the world line of any material particle travelling at less than the speed of light, from the infinite past to the infinite future, it will start and finish at the same points. Um, the world line shown in red is a ray of light which moves at 45 degrees in both the original diagram and the Penrose diagram. So if we consider an event at location A in the Penrose diagram, the fact that light travels at 45 degrees means that light cones still actually have the same shape as in the original space-time diagram. Region X in lies inside the future light cone of A. It's possible to travel from location A 
to anywhere in this region. Region Y is in the past like cone of A. It's possible to have traveled from anywhere in this region to location A. Region Z lies outside either cone of A. As a space-like separation, it's not possible to travel to or from anywhere in this region to location A. Penrose diagrams can be used to visualize what happens in around black holes. The simplest black hole is what's called a Schwarzschild black hole. This has no angular momentum, means it's not spinning, and has no net electrical charge. It could, in theory at least, be formed by the gravitational collapse of an object which wasn't spinning. The boundary of the black hole is the event horizon. This is a one-way surface. Anything which crosses the event horizon must travel to the centre of the black hole. The radius of the event horizon is given by the formula 2gm over c squared. This means that the black hole, the mass of the, the Earth, would have a Schwarzschild radius of only one centimetre, and a black hole, the mass of the Sun, would have one of only three kilometres. At the very centre of the black hole lies a singularity, which, if our laws of physics are correct, is a place of zero volume and thus infinite density, where space and time itself come to an end. The diagram shows the formation of a Schwarzschild black hole in the Minkowski universe. The two green lines show the world lines on the opposite sides of a spherically symmetric object which collapses into a black hole. For simplicity, the centre of the object is giving an x-coordinate of zero. The wavy line at the top represents a singularity. Any object which crosses the event horizon, which is shown as the dotted line, must end up there. This is shown as particle A. Anything in its forward light cone lies entirely inside the event horizon and must hit the singularity. To escape outside the event horizon would require faster than light travel. Its world line would lie at an angle of less than 45 degrees, which is impossible. A particle at location B outside the event horizon can escape from the singularity. As you can see, some of its forward light cone does not cross the event horizon. OK, let's just focus at the top of the diagram. The two points are the time-like infinities. Any particle which doesn't hit the singularity will eventually, after an infinite amount of time, reach one of these points. This shows another interesting effect. Let's watch the light signals from an object falling into the black hole. On its journey in, its light can reach an outside observer, but at the exact instant it crosses the event horizon, it takes an infinite amount of time for light to reach a distance observer. The light ray hits one of the time-like infinities. So because an outside observer would need to wait an infinite amount of time to see the object cross the event horizon, they never actually see it happen. The object appears to be frozen just outside the event horizon. You'll notice in the Penrose diagram, the right and left hand sides are the mirror images of each other. So the diagram we've just seen is often drawn in a slightly different way. In this way, rather than using x, y, z spatial coordinates and time, we use polar coordinates, distance and two angles, with the distance being defined as a distance from the centre of the black hole. Clearly, in this case, r, the distance, must be greater than or equal to zero. In this case, the diagram looks like this. What we've seen so far is a model of the simplest type of black hole. A small portion of the Penrose diagram for a rotating black hole is shown here, but it's far too complex to explain this in this simple video. What happens behind the horizon of a rotating black hole is in fact unclear. The full Penrose diagram extends indefinitely and contains a possibly infinite set of wormholes to other universes and something called white holes. White hole is a black hole in reverse. Matter can only leave a white hole and nothing can enter. 
Penrose diagrams are very useful in understanding the evolution of the universe and the changes to boundaries over time, such as the particle horizon, which is the furthest distance we can see at a given point of time. Um, this is far too detailed a topic to be covered in this short video, and many different models of the universe can be shown in Penrose diagrams. But as an illustration, I've put the Penrose diagram for a flat universe created in a big bang, which has no dark energy and goes on expanding forever. At the bottom of the diagram, the wavy line is the Big Bang singularity. If we take a location in space-time marked A, the light cone shown in red is the furthest back we can see. But interestingly, if we go further forward in time, the past light cones cover more and more of space-time in this type of universe, and eventually, in the infinite future, the past light cone will cover the entire universe.